More than 26,500 tons of horse meat are imported into the EU and Switzerland from Argentina, Uruguay, Mexico, the United States of America and Canada. The importers and retailers of horse meat emphasize the importance of animal welfare. They claim the horses are kept in a species-appropriate manner, transported with utmost care, and are stunned, killed, and slaughtered in compliance with EU standards. It is asserted that each individual piece of horse meat can be traced back to its origin. Horse meat is said to be healthy and that drug residues are excluded. The Tierschutzbund Zürich and its partner organizations investigated at the forefront of horse meat production, at auctions, collecting stations, slaughterhouses and during transportation. October 2013, USA, Billings Horse Auction in Montana. Horses from all over North America end up here. They are sold to so-called kill buyers. The paddocks are muddy, the horses in bad condition. Amongst them, even veteran sports horses, weak, or as in this case, with a dislocated shoulder. They are waiting to be chased through the auction ring, 10 to 20 seconds per horse, with the auctioneer calling them the cheapest protein you can get, sold for as low as $9, cheap items of mass production. Even before being transported to the Mexican and Canadian slaughterhouses, their bodies are covered in wounds. We attended auctions in Billings, Sugar Creek, Knoxville and New Holland and did not observe medical care for the horses at any of these locations. Horses in deplorable conditions are being purchased. Horse wrecks are still turned into a profit. Medical costs are not budgeted for in this machinery. Untrained staff beats the horses into inadequate transporters. They cause the animals to panic. Being goaded from both sides, the horses don't know where to go. Horses at the back are being beaten and there is no way for them to escape. The loading ramp is illuminated. Inside the trailer, it's pitch black. Horses don't like walking into the dark. The doors are too low and narrow. This is where the typical head and shoulder injuries occur. A collecting station in Shelby, Montana. Here the horses purchased from all over the USA are stored temporarily. The collecting station belongs to the Canadian company Bouvry, which supplies its horse meat on the European market through the French importer Ecus. Ecus is another entity of Bouvry, managed by Alain Bouvry. In consideration of animal welfare for horses, it is substantiated that horses are better off in groups, Yet, we shouldn't forget that this is outdoor breeding and we just can't control the weather just like any other farms in the world. Reputable horse breeders, on the other hand, consider one hectare per horse to be ideal. The horses are herded into crowded pens. Exhausted and injured horses are exposed to fights for dominance. There is no possibility to retreat, nor protection from bone-chilling cold or searing heat. In Canada, 56,000 US horses are slaughtered for Europe each year. That makes 70% of Canada's total production. Animal welfare standards applicable in the EU and Switzerland are consciously disregarded. With thousands of horses, the feedlots of the Canadian company Bouvry in Alberta are also overcrowded. Through associate companies, Bouvry exports horse meat to Belgium, France, Germany, Holland and Switzerland. The horses are fattened until sick. The limited space leaves them with only one option, to feed. The feeding troughs are full all day. Repeatedly, the horses lie down because their legs and hoofs are strained by their weight. The ground is covered in urine, mud and feces. The horses are obviously not attended to, also evident by the hooves which have not been treated in a long time. A horse suffering advanced strangles is left to fend for itself. This highly infectious and contagious disease would be curable. Without medical attention, however, it is fatal in most cases. We are still on the company premises of Bouvry at the so-called prime feedlot, the feedlot closest to the main building. A dead mare is lying in the mud. The stage of decomposition indicates that she has been dead for about four days, maybe longer. It is the 24th of October 2013, the temperature below freezing point. The mare hasn't been taken care of for a long time, the neglected hooves are also evidence of this. 
The mare probably died during the birth of her foal. Her foal lies two meters away from her, also heavily decomposed. Parts of it are missing. Here you get wild coyotes that help themselves to the carcasses. All this before the very eyes of the persons responsible at the Canadian slaughterhouse Bouvery. And all this, even though the Tierschutzbund Zürich already pointed out in October 2012 that sick, pregnant and dying horses are left to fend for themselves in the Bouvery feedlots. The company of Bouvery does not want to lose its customers in Europe and claims. Why does one have to publish such images, which were taken a long time ago, to produce a shocking documentary? We are not actors, but farmers that feed, breed and tend animals outdoors. We are proud of our work. The Bouvry affiliate Beyond Richelieu in Canadian Quebec purchases horses at auctions in the USA. After purchased at the auction, the horses are directly transported to slaughter. The slaughterhouse insists that the transports never exceed 12 hours. In January 2014, we accompanied a transport from New Holland in the USA. The horses were on the transporter for 23 hours without any access to food or water. CFIA, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency in charge, did not unload the horses, contrary to their statement. For the veterinarian, a quick glance into the transporter sufficed. Considering our research, the statement that everything would be done humanely and in accordance with EU standards is false. Let's leave Canada and go back to the Billings auction in Montana. From here, horse transports not only go to Canada, but south as well, to New Mexico or the export pens of Presidio in Texas. The transports take up to 20 hours, covering approximately 2,000 kilometers. The horses are not slaughtered in the USA. Their destinations are slaughterhouses in Mexico, located another 1,000 kilometers from the US border. EU standards stipulate that after a maximum of eight hours, horses must be provided with food and water. We choose the blue truck of Fabricius. He used to be a driver for Charles Carter, a large-scale Colorado kill buyer. Now Fabricius drives his own truck and supplies the notorious New Mexico kill buyer Denis Chavez. The loading is done quickly and we follow him. Until he reaches the main route, we keep a distance not to be discovered. The truck travels at a high speed in the fast lane. Fabricius has a tight schedule. He seems to have noticed us and all of a sudden slows down to about 40 kilometers per hour. We show ourselves and stay behind him. It turns into a race, much like the air and tortoise game, because he knows that his truck's fuel will take him twice as far as ours will. We lose him twice, but because we know his route and he would not risk exceeding the driving time, we know where he will unload and ultimately take the horses. Every time he reaches his destination, we are already there. At 2 o'clock in the morning at his collecting point, and on October 28, 2013, at 10.30 p.m., when he unloads the horses at Denis Chavez's collecting point in Los Lunas. Our escort costs Fabricius a day. Now he still has to drive back the same night. Early in the morning, we leave Los Lunas and drive to the export pens in Presidio, Texas. For years, the Tierschutzbund Zürich and their American partner organization Animals Angels Incorporated have been documenting these pens. The conditions contradict any promises the importers and supermarkets have made about animal protection. This injury to the shoulder is a typical result of horses being loaded into inadequate trailers by untrained staff. Panic, the horses run into battle bars and injure themselves. The wounds remain unnoticed and untreated. There is not one horse without traces of torment from the transport and beatings, drawn faces, bodies covered in small and large wounds. All three horses have severe leg injuries. They should be attended to. The pinto horse at the back should be put down immediately. Without our intervention, the horses would be left to fend for themselves or be reloaded, taken across the border to Mexico and transported for another thousand kilometers. We are still in the USA. These photos were taken on the 20th of August 2013. Horses at the Ruben Brito pens are being loaded. 
The ramp is too steep, the staff untrained. The horses are unnecessarily panicked. A horse falls in the process. We can't see if it got injured. We follow multiple trucks to the Mexican border three kilometers away. As one of the Ruben Brito transporters stops and the driver enters the border office, we get to examine the trailer. We notice two downer horses. Although it is prohibited to film in military facilities, we decide to do it visibly and to notify the border police. We want to show a border patrol officer the situation inside the trailer. With a wave of the hand, he turns us down. I don't need to look inside. We have this every day. He doesn't mind us taking more photos and filming. We notify border authorities and are able to prevent the transporter from crossing the border into Mexico. The driver is forced to turn around and unload. While the transporter turns and we get ready to follow, more horse transporters make their way to the border. We know many of them from previous investigations. They too transport horses to the slaughterhouses in Jerez, Aguascalientes, Camargo and Fresnillo. Sonia, our colleague at Animals Angels Incorporated, approaches the Ruben Brito export pen employee and explains what has happened, why we believe that a transporter with downer horses should not be allowed to cross the border. They both take a look inside the trailer to check what is going on. Both horses are still lying on the floor. Without help or space, they cannot get up. If they had to be transported any further, they would be trampled to death. But the transporter is sealed. If the seal is broken, the transporter may not cross the border. The employee calls his boss. Immediately upon his arrival, we are told to leave the premises. Ruben Brito is indignant and later calls an officer who imposes a fine on us for trespassing. The horses are still down inside the trailer. Photos taken with the hidden camera also show several other horses with wounded legs. Finally, the horses are unloaded. When we check on them the next day, they are all gone, probably on another transporter to a Mexican slaughterhouse. The two weakened horses, which had been lying on the floor for the short trip to the border a day prior, are also nowhere to be seen. Purchased at auctions all over North America, exhausted horses are transported in sealed trailers across the Mexican border and a thousand kilometers to the slaughterhouse in Aguascalientes, for example. Our second team is on the Mexican side of the Presidio border crossing. Here we watch how American horse transports enter Mexico. We decide to follow a somewhat dilapidated transporter. It is 5 o'clock in the afternoon. After 11 hours of transport time, we get the chance at a petrol station and have a look inside the transporter. Initially from the top, the horses are tightly packed. When we have a look from the bottom, we see many injured and swollen legs. The bottom is dirty. Bedding, which is mandatory in the EU and Switzerland, was not provided at all. No water and feed is carried. Mexican law does not require this. In the middle of the trailer, a horse is on its back. It has minor injuries and its knee is swollen. The nostrils flare and indicate fatigue. One eye seems to have been wounded recently, presumably through poking with the moving sticks. In the foreground, the injured leg of another horse is visible. It is now when the entire deplorable scenario becomes evident. Multiple changes of ownership, transports to auctions, to collecting points, further on to export pens, across the border, and still another long transport to the slaughterhouse. Thousands of kilometers, ordeals for days or weeks, until the day of slaughter. All importers and supermarkets claim that their suppliers are compliant with European or Swiss animal welfare standards. Fact of the matter is, that in the export countries, the animal welfare standards are much lower and not even these are being adhered to. The importers and supermarkets claim to be able to trace the life of every horse back to the farm. This, however, does not work in practice. In Uruguay and Argentina, horses have no microchips or papers to document this. 
for U.S. horses going to Mexico and Canada, the only unverified information that has to be disclosed is the origin and medical treatment of the horses over the last six months. We repeatedly experience drivers simply continuing their transport, even after we point out downer horses. We believe that these drivers are cooperative and have compassion towards the horses, but there is no way to unload the trailer. It is sealed. If the drivers break the seal, the cargo is worthless. Using a sharp-edged pipe, they try to get the downer horse to stand up, unsuccessfully. Then one of the drivers fetches an electric prod from the driver's cabin. These prods are not only prohibited in the EU and Switzerland, but also in Mexico. He prods the horse until it manages to stand up. With injured legs and a bashed-in eye, it has to endure the trip to the slaughterhouse. Argentina. Same scenario as in the USA, Canada and Mexico. Inadequate collection stations which turn to pits of mud when it rains. No weather protection. The fence and troughs pose hazards. Injured horses are left to fend for themselves. Again, the typical transport injuries. Swiss GVFI International and Belgian Equinox import horse meat from the Argentine slaughterhouse Lamar. They show inspection certificates, which define the transport and collection points as compliant with animal welfare standards. These certificates are issued by the SGS, Société Générale de Surveillance. Just how serious SGS take their responsibility is revealed by the fact that since years they only inspect one transport route from a nearby collecting station to the Lamar slaughter plant. In the meantime, Lamar receives horses from at least 32 collection points. More than 50% of these collection points are between 600 and 1,200 kilometers away. The transports can take up to 20 hours. Steep, inadequate loading ramps increase the risk of injuries. The transport vehicles are not adequate and have no roof. For hours the horses have been exposed to icy wind and rain. Tightly packed and shivering, they stand in an open trailer. Horses at the Lamar slaughterhouse, exhausted from long transports. This horse had a wire put through its mouth. We are told this is to prevent him from biting other horses. We manage to get into the slaughterhouse. Slaughtering is done at night. What we witness here does not in any way correspond to the assurances made by the Swiss GBFI or Belgian Equinox, who import horse meat to Belgium, France, Germany and Switzerland. A dying horse is lying in the tube. No one tends to it. It should be put down immediately. We have German veterinarian Claudia Eckert pass an expert opinion on the following footage. She reports, The ground of the holding pens is not slip-proof or skid-resistant. For shod horses the ground is too slippery, horses without the horseshoes can move about the concrete floor fairly safely. In the video it is audible though that some horses have horseshoes. The utilization of materials like sheet metal and concrete makes it very noisy inside the building. The echoing is very unsettling for the horses. Furthermore, herding the horses into the kill chute is poorly conducted, causing additional anxiety in the horses. Staff of the slaughterhouse approaches the horses from diagonally above, which poses an extremely threatening situation for the horses. This shows in the nervous play of their ears and the head movement towards direction of the staff. The anxiety in the animals is most obvious when the employee approaches from diagonally behind and above. It is impossible for the horse to escape to the front because the chute is too narrow and crowded. The conception of the kill box is flawed. The horses next in line can see over the door and into the kill box while the preceding horse is being shot. The person moving the horses through the chute is using an electric prod for this. The use of electric prods on horses is prohibited. An approach from the front and diagonally above is even more frightening for horses. The horse's severe anxiety is visible in the nervous play of the ears. First shot. 
The shot with the captive bolt is not placed correctly. The horse's head is not restrained, which makes it difficult to apply the device directly on the skull and results in a loss of impact energy. The angle of the shot is not directed straight at the brain, but slightly off towards the opposite eye. The effect of the stunning might not have been sufficient. The stunning might have been ineffective. A pinto horse is hanging on the tubular track by its hind legs. The horse shows three spastic contractions of the entire body and the limbs, which exceeds the normal amount of muscle reflexes usually associated with exsanguination. Stunning failure is suspected. End comments, veterinarian Eggert. The slaughtering is almost over. On our way back, we again pass the horse lying in the chute. It is still alive, but evidently in pain, since its breathing is typical. The horse reacts defensively to a touch on the head and lifts it briefly. Same slaughterhouse, Lamar, 26th of February, 2013. Upon pressure from an Argentine animal welfare organization, the slaughtering is to be interrupted for 24 hours on this day. Horse owners, whose horses had been stolen the night before, had discovered them in the slaughter pens. They are allowed to take their horses home with only but a provisional deed of transfer. This saves the authorities from having to investigate the thieves. For years, horse theft has been a major problem in Argentina. Organized gangs, backed by the legal system and police, assisted by corrupt police officers and veterinary authority, SENASA, have total control over this business. In December 2013, the Tierschutzbund Zürich reported the Swiss importer GVFI, who buys its meat in Argentina, on the suspicion that it sells stolen goods. Sport horses are slaughtered in every country we have investigated. These horses receive medical treatment regularly. Phenylbutazone is used for pain and inflammation. For horses of which the meat is predetermined for the EU or Swiss market, phenylbutazone is banned. In Argentina, we can buy it without a prescription, even though it's a prescription drug. While we are discussing our next steps, another Tierschutzbund Zürich team is on the road in Uruguay. There we encounter the same problems known everywhere else in North and South America. Around 400,000 horses live in Uruguay. Every year about 40,000 are slaughtered, among them horses from Brazil. The EU, Switzerland and Russia are the main buyers. Uruguay has no transport regulations for the protection of animals. The transport vehicles are inadequate. The animals are not being taken care of. Horses for the Sorel slaughterhouse arrive at the collection point Valesques. By now we've come to know the situation. Inadequate trailers, untrained staff, chaos during unloading. Horses hit their heads. Pushed from two sides, they are cornered. Change of location. The slaughterhouse clay does not offer sufficient weather protection either. Many of the shelters are broken, the tarps torn off. Horses stand in muddy paddocks, which rapidly turn into swampy terrain when it rains. There are no clean or dry places to lie. Horses for slaughter are gathered on the pastures of the slaughterhouse clay. Workers make use of dogs, which attack and frighten the horses even more. Besides the obvious violations of animal welfare, the problem in Uruguay is, just like in Argentina and North America, that even sport horses are slaughtered. In Uruguay, the drug phenylbutazone may be obtained without prescription. There is no control or obligation to list this drug in the horse's passports. Hence, the probability of meat from Uruguay containing residues of prohibited drugs is high.